right, here we go, Tate. <laughs> Take one. Come on down, Pat, have a seat. <laughs> yeah, hang on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> See one, take two. <laughs> All right, there he goes. There he goes. <laughs> Shut the noise up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number one. Hey, Leroy, this is Kathy Eaton Gray, and I live in Deer Isle, Maine. Am I? question is, I've always been kind of curious about the sand that goes something like red sky, red sky at night, sailors tonight, and, and red sky in the morning, the sailors be warning, or something like that. You probably know how it goes. Where did it come from? Uh, how did we all manage to think up that? That's a question. All right, thanks, bye. Okay, Kathy, I'm going to tell you where that came from. If you read the Gospel of Matthew in the Bible, chapter 16, you will find that saying. And it's red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. And that's where you'll find it. It's nothing new. It's nothing that any of us come up with. It was printed 2,000 years ago. It, it is true. And most generally, sailors and fishermen pay attention to it because most generally, it's like seeing the mare's tails in the sky when the clouds are look, look like mare's tails. You're going to get some wind. So we, it, it has a lot to do with just watching what's around you, your surroundings. And it gives you a, a good indication of what's coming. Okay? Thank you for your question. Hope that this answer is satisfactory for you. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Question number two. Hey, Leroy. How are you doing? This is Seth from Boston. Love your series so far. Thanks a lot for taking my question. I'm curious what you've seen global warming do to the lobster fishing industry up there in Stonington. Thanks a lot. Take care. Over the years, I've seen high points and low points in the lobster industry when back in the early 80s, a pound to a trap was good fishing. And then all of a sudden, a lot of the uh, co-ops and things along the coast had the hatcheries. They hatched out a lot of lobsters and they released them when they were inch long. And then a few years later, we had some bumper crops. So whether the global warming affected that or not, I don't know. And it's been my experience over the years of clamming and muscling and scalloping and all. These things cycle. And a lobster from the time that it's a seed, an egg, like a frog's egg, till the time that we can keep it, that lobster is seven years old. So if we got a period of a lot of juveniles and the market lobsters have been caught up, now we got to wait for the juveniles to grow up to market size. And to my what I've been talking to people, to my uh, opinion, the stocks look good. Uh, just where it's going from there, I think time will tell. Last winter, we had a minimum snowfall. Maybe, maybe three or four inches for the whole winter on this island. And I've seen years pass, three, four, five years ago, when in April, March, it snowed every day. And by the end of March, we had six feet of snow on the ground. So that changes our water table, it changes the temperature in the ocean, and all of that. But this year, we didn't have that snow. I think that water temperature didn't cool off as much. So that brings the temperature of things up. You hear a lot about, or I've heard a lot about, sort of the epicenter of lobsters that have moved from, it sort of started in Long Island Sound and it has moved up the coast to where it is now, sort of centered around Stonington. How much do you know about that and what's your opinion on that, that movement? Well, I have, a, I have an opinion on the lobster movement, if you want to call it that. I know I fished off of Montauk, Long Island with my father-in-law and some other fishermen down there. 
we had 80, 90 traps, and we'd have seven, 800 pounds of lobsters. And 300 pounds of them would be eggers, the seed lobsters. And the fishermen down there never practiced their taking care of their fishery. They kept the egg lobsters, scrubbed the eggs off and sold them. So they got the $10 for the lobster and killed their industry. So have the lobsters migrated or have they just killed them off from their breeding grounds? And uh, most of the New England states do not practice the oversized lobsters and the punch lobsters. We call them punch because it's got a notch in their tail for the ones that have eggs and we release them. They don't have that uh, law in effect. So they're taking whatever comes. So how much effect is that having on the industry? And can, can we blame it to global warming? I think, I think there's a, somewhere in the thing here, we've got to get together and have the laws uniform for all the states that fish in these areas, not just for one state, like the state of Maine that has practiced this practice since 1917. And uh, it's worked. It's worked because they're all up here fishing. They don't have any lobsters, so they're all up here fishing. So that tells you that this process that we're doing is working. And that's my take on it. We have another person here that can maybe shed a little light on what I've said. This is only my opinion. It's no science behind it other than just knowledge of what I've seen over the years. And uh, we have a doctor of science and maybe she can shed a little more light on uh, what she knows. Okay, we're gonna go get her. Come right. on, Tate, bring that camera. Hello, Dr. Kala. We had a question on what effect has global warming had on the lobster industry? So I've answered it to the best that I could, in my knowledge. So I'm going to turn it over to you and see what your research has told you. All right, well, I'd like to know, Leroy, what you said you've seen has happened with lobsters. What I've seen in years past is a small catch back in the 70s, early 80s when a pound to a trap was good fishing. And then the catch started to increase. And in, in the 90s, they had bumper crops. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any snow this year, mm -hmm. but you had rain in May, mm -hmm. which kept the ocean temperature down. Yep. So the guys that were fishing in the deep water were doing well, and the guys fishing in the shallow water weren't doing anything. Yep. So that meant that the lobster didn't come up into the shallow water from the deep water because the water was too cold. So when they're going to molt, they're not going to come in. They're not going to molt till that water temperature gets a certain size. Or a certain temperature, I'm sorry. And if it's too cold, there's been years past that they didn't come up at all. Right, right. They stay in the warmer water. Um, or, so for settled lobsters, the young lobsters, after they hatch from eggs, they are hanging out in the water column up at the surface of the water and they wait for the right temperature to settle down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll actually go swim down to the bottom when they're ready to become benthic animals, live on the bottom. They swim down. If the water's too cold, they bounce right back up and say, let me cruise along the current here a little bit longer and let me settle. And that's uh, one of the reasons why we think that Stonington has become such the hot spot where in the 70s it was more friendship yeah. Um, area was the real hot spot for lobsters. And instead here, we've had warmer, deeper water here um, off of Stonington and Vinyl Haven. And that's why Zone C is such a... I think because you're also nearer the Gulf Stream where it veers in. Mm -hmm. That would warm the, the area up warmer here than it would further down. Well, it's out further, further down the coast. And then when it comes up to make its turn to go to Europe, it comes in closer. Well, we've had the Gulf Stream come in. Uh, in 2012, the big warming event everybody talks about, the Gulf Stream actually shifted 212 kilometers to the northwest, and it wrapped into the Gulf of Maine. And that's why it raised water temperatures about eight degrees Celsius. A lot of people think that that warming event was because 
basically we had a burner underneath the Gulf of Maine and we heated it up. It was actually a different water mass. It's a completely different water mass that's moving in. When we hear people talk about they're seeing these gray trigger fish or they're seeing some southern warmer species, that's because they traveled with that water. It's not because mm -hmm. they've all of a sudden started settling here because it's not a permanent shift in temperature yet. Yeah. Um, we're going to see these fluctuations here and there as, as the water as our source of water changes in the Gulf of Maine. Yeah. You need both sides. You need all the information you can get to keep this industry viable for everybody. It isn't just one fishery, it, it's fisheries. And that means fin fish, flatfish, lobsters, clams, scallops, mussels, herring, menhaden. It, it, cover, it should cover all of the fisheries so that they're all protected to a certain degree, and in my mind, they all rely on each other. Mm -hmm. It's all a socio-ecological system, is what yeah. we call it. <laughs> they, they all rely on each other. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, thank you for coming down. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Any questions, please call in 224-58-LEROY. And we're at the Maine Center for Coastal Fisheries and we will answer your questions the best we can to our knowledge. Thank you. Action. Action. <laughs> Take 27. <laughs>